Hello everybody and welcome to Storm Reads and today I am going to be talking about some books from April that I think sound kind of cool. So this is not necessarily an anticipated reads video it's just more of a I think those um, books sound kind of cool and I might like put them on my Libby or something like that. Um, I did an anticipated video at the beginning of the year of a lot of books that was going to come out. Um, now if I do find some uh, throughout the year that I am anticipating, I will let you know, but for the most part, these are just um, books that I think sound cool or they're in a series that I read, but um, it's not like I can't wait till the next one comes out, but I will read the next one when it comes out. You know, it's not like super anticipated. Anyway, so I'm going to start with the middle grade books and then go to the like adult young adult books. And so I think I have five middle grade books. So the first one I have is Teddy versus the Fuzzy Doom by Brayden Hallett. It comes out April 2nd. And let's see, it comes out from Anik Press. I don't know who they are. Anyway, it says, The secrets of Ravenboro have been buried far too long. Now they're waking up. It's for fans of My Big Frat Zombie Goldfish and Incredible Dead Pets of Rex De Dexter, which I have read uh, books in both of those series, and I really like them. It's a laugh-out-loud new series that kicks off in a school infested with bra brain-eating hamsters. <laughs> Book 1, Teddy vs. the Fuzzy Doom. Starting at a new school is hard enough for an anxious kid like Teddy, but Ravensboro Elementary seems extra unsettling. First, there are the zombie-like kids and teachers with their vacant stares and strange echoey voices. Then there are the hamsters. So many hamsters. With their scrappy claws and beady eyes and... Wait, can those hamsters talk? Ted must face old fears, making friends, and new ones, evil hamsters. In this frightening and fast-paced, hilarious and fe heartfelt debut, about the alongside a crew of misfits, Teddy untangles the supernatural mysteries of this rainy town of Ravensboro in this highly illustrated, action-packed new horror comedy series, and it sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> The next one I have is Bridge to Bat City by Ernest Klein. And this one comes out April 9th. And it's from Little Brown Books for Young Readers. It says, After losing her mother, 13-year-old Opal B. Flats moves in with her Uncle Roscoe on the family farm. There she bonds with Uncle Roscoe over music and befriends a group of orphans, music-loving bats. But just as the farm is starting to feel like home, the bat cave is destroyed by a big mining company with its sights set on the farmland next. It's Opal and if Opal and the bats can fit in anywhere, it's the nearby city of Austin, home to their favorite music and a host of wonderfully eccentric characters. But with people afraid of the bats and determined to get rid of them, it will take a whole lot of courage to prove that this is where the bats and Opal belong. And so it's kind of a contemporary middle grade and I don't do a whole lot of those. I've said that before. But it involves bats and so it sounds like it could be fun. <laughs> then this next one is called The Secret Language of Birds by Lynn Kelly. It's from the award-winning author of Song for a Well, which I have read. And it's contemporary type of book. And it says, um, This is a tale about a girl who discovers a pair of endangered birds about to lay eggs in the marsh of her summer camp and the secret plan she hatched to help them. Nina is used to feeling like the odd one out, both at school and in her large family. But while trying to fit in at summer camp, she discovers something even more. Two majestic birds have built a nest in the marsh behind the abandoned infirmary. They appear to be whooping cranes, but that's impossible. 
Uh, Nina is an amateur bird watcher, and all of her res resources tell her that those rare birds haven't nested in Texas in over a hundred years. When Nina reports the sighting to wildlife officials, more questions arise. Expert track experts track all of the endangered birds, but they can't identify the female bird that Nina has found. Who is she, and where did she come from? With the help of some fellow campers, Nina sets out to discover who the mysterious bird really is. As she gets closer to the truth, will she find a flock of her own? And I seem to be drawn to uh, contemporary books that involve animals <laughs> and stuff. So, But I did like A Song for a Whale, and that one was contemporary by this author. So I thought I'd give the author another try and see if I like this one. And the cover's really pretty. Then I have Friend or UFO by Julie Buxman. This is the third book in the Area 51 files. I really like this series. It is a lot of, it is very cute and everything. It involves aliens and it has a lot of really fun graphics in it. And this one comes out April 16th. And it comes out from Delacorte Press. And so, it says, Sky and her friends tackle their biggest mystery yet, the discovery of Area 52, in the third installment of this laugh-out-loud, highly illustrated middle-grade series. So, Sky's life in Area 51 is full of surprises, like the fact that there are aliens, and she even has one as a friend, Elvis. And uh, she's going to have her biggest surprise yet when she learns about something, and then she f learns about Area 52. And I kind of feel like if I read any of the blurb on here that it's a little bit spoilery for um, any, anything else. Maybe uh, some might feel like that's spoilery uh, for maybe some of the other books. And so I'm just going to say that it looks like it's going to be fun and there's going to be an Area 52 and probably more alien surprises. And I think this one probably involves some of her family. And the one big big thing is like once she was once she came to Area 51, she's not allowed to leave. Like she stays there with her uncle Anish, and she can't even see her grandmother anymore because um, nobody is allowed in Area 51, and you're not allowed out of Area 51. And so, yeah, um, it's gonna have like a big surprise. And I don't want to say because I think it would be kind of like spoilery. So, but. I am curious about this one. I do like this series, like I said, but I mean, it's not like one that I'm anticipating, but I will be reading this one soon, hopefully, if I can find it on Libby. Then the last one I have for middle grade is Charlie Thorne and the Royal Society. This is by Stuart Gibbs. It is the fourth book in the Charlie Thorne series. This... It's not an anticipated Stuart Gibbs because I'm not the hugest fan of the series. I do like it, and I will read them all, but it's not like, you know, Spy School, which I definitely anticipate. This one is just one that, oh, Stuart Gibbs got a new book in this series, and I will be putting it on my Libby and hopefully get to it whenever I can. And so this one has, Charlie Thorne is a genius, Charlie Thorne is fearless. Charlie Thorne may have finally met her match. Charlie Thorne is used to being on the run ever since she was recruited by the CIA to track down Einstein's most dangerous equation. Charlie and former CIA agent Dante Garcia and Melania Moon have traveled around the world to prevent history's greatest discoveries from falling into the wrong hands. But after beating others to secret hidden, secrets hidden by Einstein, Darwin, and Cleopatra, they find that they are not the only ones searching for the immensely powerful discovery of Isaac and Newton. And so that's all I'm going to read about that. So yeah, it's basically about uh, Charlie who is a 12 year old genius and she um, she made this, I think an invention and somebody stole it, this company. So she hacked into that company and stole like 40 million dollars for them. And she's been on the run pretty much ever since. And then when some things started happening at the beginning in, like, the first one, she does get recruited by, like, the CIA to help uh, figure things out and everything like that. But they're not always happy with Charlie. And now she's got, like, people from, like, um, Egypt and 
is I think some uh, the Mossad and like all different countries, Russia, Russia maybe. All these people are after her because she can figure out the clues and find these famous like things, discoveries, or whatever it is. And it's a little far fetched, even for me. I mean, I know middle grade is like super far fetched anyway, but sometimes it's just a little bit like okay. And so that I think that's why it's probably not like one of my favorites, <laughs> but I still do enjoy it. And I mean, I like Charlie fine. It's just hard to believe that, like, she's, like, this 12 years old and she's, like, this super, you know, that or whatever. But it's still fun. And I think I forgot to say, but this one comes out a April 23rd from Simon & Schuster. And it's like, yep, that's all of the middle grade. So now we will be headed into the adult and the, the young adult, if I have any. Okay, so the first one I have is The Reappearance of Rachel Price by Holly Jackson. Um, I've read, uh, I think I've read all of her books so far. And I've enjoyed them all, you know, okay. So I am curious about this one. I think my favorite is probably the first one in her trilogy, her Good, Guide, her Good Girl's Guide trilogy. And so I am curious. And so this one's April 2nd. It comes out from Delacorte Press. And so it is for young adult, and says a new true crime fueled mystery thriller about a girl determined to uncover the shocking truth about her missing mother while filming a documentary on unsolved case. Lights, cameras, lies. 18-year-old Belle has lived her whole life in the shadow of her mother's mysterious disappearance. 16 years ago, Rachel Price vanished, and young Belle was the only witness. But she has no memory of it. Rachel is gone, long proof sit dead, and Belle wishes everyone would just move on. But the case is dragged up from the past when the Price family agrees to a true crime documentary. Belle can't wait for the filming to end, for a life to go back to normal. As then, and then the impossible happens, Rachel Price reappears, and life will never be normal again. And I'm not going to read any more since it is kind of a mystery thriller. But I am really curious about it and, like, what happened to uh, Rachel Price and why she stay gone so long. And so it'll be interesting, I think. At least I hope. The next one I have is The Murder of Mr. Ma by John Shin Yi Ni. Probably butchered that. And S.J. Rosen. <laughs> Not sure about that one either. And I really like the cover on this one. And it says it's for fans of Guy Ritchie's Sherlock Holmes films. This stunning swashbuckling series opener by a powerhouse duo of authors is at once comfortably familiar and tantalizingly new. Two unlikely allies race through the cobble streets of 1920s London in search of a killer targeting Chinese immigrants. London, 1924, when shy academic Lao Shi meets larger than live judge d ren g d ren g yeah they're gonna be names in here i can't pronounce sorry his life abruptly turns when turns from books and lectures to daring chases and narrow escapes d has come to london to investigate the murder of a man he'd known during world war one when serving with the chinese labor corps no sooner has d interviewed the grieving widow then another dead body turns up. Then another. All stabbed to death with a butterfly sword. Will D and Lao be able to discover the threads of the murder? Or are they next in line to be victims? Anyway, it sounds kind of cool. And so, never heard of these authors or anything. I, just, I was really drawn to the cover. And then I thought it sounded cool. And so I thought maybe you guys might too. Okay, so this next one is The Vacancy in Room 10 by Serafina Nova Glass. I don't know who this person is, but evidently it is the most anticipated 2024 book release by Nerd Daily and the most anticipated crime fiction novel of 2024 by Novel Suspects. So, she must be popular. I just don't think I've ever read this author. When Anna Hartley's husband, Henry, calls her with a terrible, guilty confession, she can't believe what she hears. It has to be a bad joke. The mild, predictable artist she married would never hurt a fly, 
let alone commit murder. Uh oh But her confusion turns to horror when police find his body washed up on the banks of the Rio Grande. Desperate for answers to the million of questions his untimely death has raised, Anna checks into the Sycamores, a rundown motel turned apartment Henry rented as an art studio. As she absorbs every bit of gossip, the eclectic mix of residents are willing to share about her husband, she begins to piece together a picture of a very different man than the one she had married and the life he led behind her back. Uh oh The more she learns and the less sense things seem to make, she finds herself wondering... Did she ever really know Henry at all? And so, yeah. Sounds kind of interesting. It's a thriller. You know how I am with thrillers. Hit or miss. It comes out April from Graydon House. But, I don't know. The cover drew me in. The colors or whatever. And I thought it sounded cool. And I do like to try thrillers. Even though I'm not very... <laughs> they always sound better than they are in theory. <laughs> Just for me. Anyway. This next one... It, it just sounded fun, and the cover, like, grabbed me because um, when you see it, you'll know. But it's um, Bless Your Heart by Liddy Ryan. It says, Rise and shine, the Evans women have some undead to kill. <laughs> it's 1999 in southeast Texas, and the Evans women, owner of the only funeral parlor in town, are keeping steady with normal business. The dead die, you bury them, end of story. That's how Dulcie Evans has done it for the last 80 years, and her progeny, Leonor, and Grace, Leonor's soft-hearted daughter, have run the Evans Funeral Parlor for the last 15 years without drama. Ever since that god-awful mess that left two bodies in the ground and Grace raising her infant daughter, Luna, alone. When the town gossip Mina Jean Murphy's body is brought into, in for a regular burial and she raises from the dead instead, it's clear that the Stryogi, Stryogi, Stry, yep, I don't know how exactly how you say that, the original vampire are back and the Evans women are the ones who need to fight back to protect their town. As more folks in the town turn up dead, and Deputy Roger Taylor begins asking way too many questions. Dulce, Leonor, and Grace, and now Luna, must take up their blades and figure out who is behind the Stryogi's return. As she said, as the saying goes, what rises up must go back down. <laughs> but as spoke, unspoken secrets and revelations spill from the past into the present, the Evans family must face the sometimes the dead aren't the only things you want to keep buried. <laughs> it just sounds like it could be a fun vampire book. I don't know. Um, this one comes out April 9th from Minotaur Books. I think I forgot to say that. This next one is called um, The Hungry Dark by Jen Williams. Read par I've read books from Jen Williams in the past. I think I've given them like a solid three stars. They were okay. But her books always sound really kind of interesting, so I always give them a try, but like it's not like high priority or anything. But this says, um, a macrobay murder plagues a rural town as a scam artist psychic races to find answers in this haunting thriller. So, it says, as a child, Ashley Whitelam could often see odd things nobody else could. Quiet, watchful figures she called the heedful ones kept a strange visual everywhere she went. As an adult, she keeps seeing visions to keeps these visions to herself, but she's turned her taste of the beyond into a career as a psychic. Part parting people from their money with a combination of psychology and internet research. When the Lake District is gripped by a series of grisly child murders, Ashley offers her services to the police for free publicity. But as Ashley leads the police on a fruitless search around the small town of Greenbeck, she catches a glimpse of those old ghosts from her childhood, and following them into the woods, she finds something she never expected, the corpse of the latest missing child. Press fly into a frenzy, and the police grow suspicious. Either Ashley's psychic abilities are real, or she is guilty of murder. 
Hounded by interviews and interrogations, Ashley teams up with Freddie Miller, a podcaster, uncovering the, cr covering the crimes. As they investigate, Ashley realizes that there's no way to distance herself from these murders. Whoever or whatever is it is that haunts the lake is haunting her too. And so it sounds good. It says it's a horror mystery and a thriller. And so I'm curious. It comes out August 9th from Crooked Lane Press. So I'm definitely going to be marking this one on Libby. And I hope that I can get an audiobook because it has a podcaster in it. So I'm curious if they'll have like little podcasty parts. I don't know. They've been doing that a lot lately, it seems. <laughs> and then the next one is... The Garden Girls by Jessica R. Patch. And it says, On a remote Outer Bank Island, a serial killer catches his prized specimen. And to stop him, the FBI agent must com an FBI agent must confront his own twisted past. FBI agent Tiberius Granger has seen his share of darkness. But a new case sets him on edge. It's not just the macro pay way both victims found posed in front of lighthouses are tattooed with flowers that match their names. There are also the unsettling connection to the women Ty once loved and to the shadowy cult they both risked everything to escape. Bexley Hemingway's sister has gone missing and she'll do anything to find her, including teaming up with Ty. That may prove a mistake, and not just because Ty doesn't know he know he's the father of her teenage son. Okay. It still the killer is taunting Ty, drawing every drawing everyone close to him into deeper danger. And so yeah, it is a Christian fiction mystery suspense or romantic suspense and everything. And it comes out April first and I don't see who it comes out from. So I think it is part of Harlequin like love inspired but not like attached to the category ones because it's a little bit bigger I think but I'm not sure but I think because I've I've been meaning to read this author I have another one of her books <laughs> that I've been meaning to read and I haven't and I know it's a love inspired but it's like I don't know the, the bigger version or something like that and so the last one I have is The Mayfair Dagger by Ava January. Comes out April 23rd from Crooked Lane Books. And it is a uh, historical mystery. It says, um, a witty book set in the heart of 19th century London. This daring adventure features an intrepid woman detective with will thrill fans of Deanna Rayborn and uh, Catherine Shellman. Now, I've read Deanna Rayborn, but I haven't read Catherine Shellman yet. She is on my list, though. London, 1894, Albertine Honeycomb never wanted a husband, and certainly not the one with 15 children that her, hu that her cousin, Aubrey, is trying to marry her off to. She reinvents herself as Countess Von Daga... Da Daga? A private detective aiding the upper echelon of women in, so in society. As the Countess, she is, she is a married woman with a conveniently absent husband who doesn't exist, which allows her far more freedom than being single. When Lord Grendel, from whom she has, re has recovered blackmail letters, is murdered, Albertine is suspect number one having been the last person to see him when the Duke of Earley comes looking for her utterly fictitious husband, she realizes she has landed herself in hot water without a tea bag. <laughs> when Albertine also becomes a prime suspect in her fictional husband's death, things are looking grim. <laughs> Oops. Didn't think about that ahead of time, did you? Unless Albertine can prove who murdered Lord Grendel and clear her name, her choices are stepmothering enough small children to start a school or hanging from the end of Her Majesty's rope. Now, I think this sounds really good. The only thing is I hope it's not too feminist. I know this whole, like, I don't need a husband thing is a thing. 
But this is, it's historical. And it can still be a thing, but not, like, rub it in your face or whatever. So, I, I don't know. So, it is on the list, but it is down on the list. So, maybe somebody can read it for me and let me know. <laughs> But it, it does sound interesting. I love the fact that she has gotten herself into trouble because now they think that she has killed off her fictional husband and I think that's funny. <laughs> so I tried to pick books that I thought were interesting that I thought maybe some of you guys would think interesting that maybe not everybody else is talking about when they talk about what's coming out in April. So I hope that I have picked your interest on some of these books. Let me know if there are any of these that you think are cool and that you're going to put on your Libby or whatever. And I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye.